to St. Peter's. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be back here with you uh, for my second Sunday. I should have sent Claire away longer. I am so enjoying my time here with you. Um, but for those of you who are strangers or visitors, I'm Gordon Reed. Oops, that's it. Wasn't working, I suppose. I'm Gordon Reed, and I was the rector of St. Clement's up on 20th and Cherry. And now I'm retired, so I'm able to come and help out as I'm doing here. Uh, the liturgy you have in front of you, and we begin by saying the acclamation, blessed be God, holy and living God. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. And now we say together the song of Judith. I will sing a new song to my God, for you are great and glorious, wonderful in strength, invincible. Let the whole creation serve you, for you spoke and all things came into being. You sent your breath, and it formed them. No one is able to resist your voice. Mountains and cities are stirred to their depths. Rocks melt like wax at your presence. But to those who fear you, you continue to show mercy. No sacrifice, however fragrant, shall please you. But whoever fears the Lord, shall stand in your sight forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. We sit for the readings. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem and called a summit of the elders, the leaders, judges, and officials of Israel. Once they presented themselves before God, Joshua said to the whole assembly, this is the word of Yahweh, the God of Israel. I now call upon you <clears throat> to revere and serve Yahweh completely and sincerely. Cast off the gods that your ancestors worshiped beyond the Euphrates and in Egypt and worship Yahweh alone. If you do not want to worship Yahweh, then make the decision today whom you will worship, even if it is the God of your ancestors beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose country you live. As for me and my household, we will worship Yahweh. Then the people responded, Far be it from us to abandon Yahweh to worship other gods. It was Yahweh, our God, who brought us and our ancestors up and out of the land of slavery. Yahweh performed these great signs before our eyes. Yahweh protected us on the entire journey and among all the peoples whose land we passed through. Yahweh drove us out before, drove out before us the Amorites and all the people dwelling in the land. We too will serve Yahweh, who is our God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us read together the verses of Psalm 30, 34 appointed for today. The eyes of, of God, God are upon, upon the righteous. righteous. And, and God's, God's ears are open to their, their cry. The face, the face of God is against those who do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. 
the righteous cry, and God hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. God is near to the brokenhearted and will save those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but God will deliver them out of them all. God will keep safe all their bones. Not one of them shall be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. Will be punished. O God, you will, you will ransom the life of your servants, and none will be punished who trust in you. <clears throat> A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Finally, draw your strength from Christ and from the strength of that mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand firm against the tactics of the devil. Our battle ultimately is not against human forces, but against the sovereignties and powers, the rulers of the world of darkness and the evil spirits of the heavenly realms. You must put on the armor of God if you are to resist on the evil day and, having done everything you can, to hold your ground. Stand fast, then, with truth as the belt around your waist, justice as your breastplate, and zeal to spread the good news of peace as your footgear. In all circumstances, hold faith up before you as your shield, it will help you extinguish the fiery darts of the evil one. Put on the helmet of salvation and carry the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Always pray in the Spirit with all your prayers and petitions. Pray constantly and attentively for all God's holy people. Pray also for me, that God will open my mouth and put words on my lips that I may boldly make known the mystery of the good news, that mystery for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may have courage to proclaim it as I ought. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, Everyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in them. Just as the living Abba God sent me, and I have life because of Abba God, so those who feed on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. It is not the kind of bread your ancestors ate, for they died. Whoever eats this kind of bread will live forever. Jesus spoke these words while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. Many of his disciples remarked, we can't put up with this kind of talk. How can anyone take it seriously? Jesus was fully aware that the disciples were murmuring in protest at what he had said. Is this a stumbling block for you, he asked them. What then if you were to see the Chosen One ascend to where the Chosen One came from? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh in itself is useless. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Yet among you there are some who don't believe. Jesus knew from the start, of course, those who would refuse to believe and the one who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I have told you that no one can come to me and let, unless it is granted by Abba, God. From this time on, many of the disciples broke away and wouldn't remain in the company of Jesus. Jesus then said to the twelve, Are you going to leave me too? Simon Peter answered, Rabbi, where would we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe. We are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. 
The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit. <clears throat> In a church dedicated to St. Peter, you must have heard almost all the sermons that can be preached about Peter. And so it's rather foolhardy of me to want to talk about the last verse of that gospel, where Peter says, when the Lord says, are you going to desert us too? He says, where are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. In the Vatican, where I often used to be, when I was an Anglican Archdeacon of Italy and Malta, I often used to look at the uh, text that they have round the, I don't know what you would call it, the pediment, or the, um, round the um, top of the church, St. Peter's, and they were all quotations about St. Peter, like, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And then, as you have in your stained glass window there at the front, feed my lambs, Peter, feed my sheep. The only one they don't have up is, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> Funny that, isn't it? But you can quite understand that no pope wants to sit there with, get thee behind me, Satan, having been said to his predecessor, St. Peter. But it's important that we take that side in as well. And yet the one here where Peter will not leave he has learned his lesson, and he says to the Lord, where could we go now that we know you, now that we know eternal life is in your company? And eating uh, the last, well, by the time the gospel was written, they had learned to eat the last supper, the Lord's Supper, over and over again, that great symbol of the church being fed with the bread and the wine that Christ had blessed at the Last Supper. And Peter was saying, we have nowhere else to go. This is eternal life, that we should know you. And last week I talked about all the I am sayings. I am the bread of life. I am the vine and you are the branches. I am the good shepherd. The shepherd looks after his sheep. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's St. John that records all these, because John is an old man, bishop in Ephesus, caring for Our Lady, as he was told to do by our Lord on the cross, son, there is your mother, mother, there is your son. And from that moment, the disciple took her to his own home. Which reminds me that when uh, Mother Claire asked me to do these two Sundays while she was away, I said, do you realize that one of these Sundays, last Sunday, was the 15th of August, the Feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary into Heaven? And Claire knew that I am, was the rector of St. Clement's, where you can't get much higher in the Episcopal Church. And therefore I said to her, are you really going to let me loose among your flock on the Feast of the Assumption? And she said, oh yes, I'm sure they'll be able to survive. <laughs> well, of course, last week I forgot and talked all about the bread of life and naturally the I am sayings. But the assumption of Our Lady is apocryphal. But it, fo it, it follows from the love of the disciples for Jesus and for his mother and for all that he had done. And when I came to St. Clement's first, uh, in 2004, they asked me to preach, <coughs> presumably to see if I could. And <coughs> this was before I was hired. And so it was the Feast of the Assumption, and St. Pe uh, Clement's was packed to the doors with 300 people. Um, and I said at the beginning, well, where else would a good Jewish boy put his mother if not on a great golden throne up in the middle. And there was a peal of laughter. Uh, you're much more restrained than 
that lot. There was a feel of laughter, and I think that got me the job. I'm not sure. I did say more than that, but at least I made it clear that the Lord God would gladly take in the Blessed Virgin on her death, however it happened. So that's what Claire、um, gave me permission to do last week, and since I forgot it, I thought I would just tell you it this week. But this week we're looking at the fact that Peter and the other disciples said, "We have to stick with you." Because where else could we go? And it's true that even when they had doubts, and they must have had enormous doubts when they heard him talking about eating his flesh, drinking his blood, sounded very pagan. And what was he meaning by all these metaphors? They must have doubted sometimes, and wondered if they'd made a big mistake. Especially when they saw him on the cross, and yet Peter said, "Where else have we to go?" Now you and I are in the same position as St. Peter. We may often doubt some of the tenets of the faith. Every detail can't necessarily、um, present itself to us as rational and to be believed. But where else could we go? Where love and charity, and care and kindness, would be the motivation of everything we do, where else would teach as blatantly, I was going to say, openly, as Jesus did, that if we lose our lives, in the world sense of losing them, we will find them. Only those of us who have learned that the love of Christ constrains us, that we have nowhere else to go, because anywhere else we went would be second best. The gospel is good news, and we are commissioned to preach it, not with our lips, except the poor preachers, but with our lives. By going out and showing the love of Christ in a world which desperately needs more love, desperately needs kindness and compassion and care, we are the bearers of that wonderful gospel. So where else would we go but the altar of God to receive the bread and the wine of eternal life? And we go out into the world carrying that spirit. Of Christ in us, metaphorically, of course, although not necessarily so, because eternal life can begin now, and we begin leading the life that we shall lead for all eternity in heaven. We shall lead a life of love and compassion and kindness and goodness throughout the universe. I am a science fiction addict, and when I see things like Star Trek and Star Wars, and read all the novels of some of the great science fiction writers like Ursula Le Guin, I can see human attempts to describe something enormous, something fantastic, something wonderful, because that's all we can do when we think. Of life with God, the Blessed Trinity. I think Claire was worried in case I told you that the Blessed Virgin Mary had made it into a quadrinity. There are four persons in the Godhead: Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and Mary. Well, I'm not going that far. But what I am saying is that she was incorporated into the body of her Son. As he had been incorporated into her body, fleshly speaking, she, in a spiritual way, was incorporated into the body of her son and received into the life of God. The three persons of the Trinity are destined to become a, tr- become a trillion person being, and then the universe. Will waken up, and we will have a lot to do. And the great thing is that what we are asked to do here 
looking after the needy and the hungry and the persecuted is what we will still be doing in heaven because there will still be a universe of a trillion star systems presumably with a trillion races of people to be looked after and what an adventure that will be it's J.M. Barry who said to die will be an awfully big adventure and it will but rising again will be an even better and bigger adventure and so when Peter said there's nowhere else for us to go we have to stay with you he wasn't being minimalist he wasn't being downhearted and saying oh well we have to put up with second best he was saying we have seen the best and we are going on with that and you ha in this church have him as your patron and it could not be a greater patron Peter the, the one who doubted the one who denied his Lord the one who repented and then the one who became the chief of the Apostles what an example go on showing that example here in Philadelphia as long as this church will last which I hope will be forever in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen and now we stand to recite a summary of our belief the Nicene Creed we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As God's people, let us pray for the needs of the church and the world, saying, O oh God, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of God, loved wholly by God, and sent to be the light of the world. O oh God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For leaders of nations and for those who serve us in government, that all people may work for peace and justice. O oh God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are persecuted, shunned, neglected, or rejected because of prejudice, that they may find welcoming love in our community of faith. O oh God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all members of our community, that we may recognize the gifts we have received from the Spirit and use them freely for the good of all. O oh God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hear our prayers for those in this congregation and community in need, especially those listed in the bulletin and all those affected by the dangerous wildfires around the world, the people of Haiti and Afghanistan, 
Joe Finelli as he mourns his mother, former assistant sexton Gary Rodriguez, who is ill, and those we name aloud or silently now. O oh God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hear our prayers of thanksgiving for the blessings of this life. For Gordon Reed celebrating and preaching today, the very successful completion of Sing Philadelphia, and those blessings we name now aloud or silently. O oh God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone. We pray especially for those killed by gun violence, Agnes Finelli, aged 98, Doris Adams, the mother of one of my colleagues at work, those killed in Haiti and Afghanistan, and those we now name aloud or silently. O oh God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Holy God, lover of the human family and helper of all in need, hear the prayers we offer in faith and strengthen us in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In a moment of silence, let us call to mind our sins, things we have done, things we have not done that should have been done, anything against our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Offer one another a sign of peace and friendship and fellowship. I shall wave. <clears throat> Peace be with you. Peace. I've lost my thing. Do you play now? Yeah, thank you. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Let's put this thing on again.
too much last week. So I'll just take the one. You could put that one back. Oh, yes, thank you. <clears throat> oh, that's the gluten free. I've done it, yes, thank you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness, we have this bread. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. Fine. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of, the abund of life abundant. From before time you made, us ready, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon and stars, earth, winds and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal your ri the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died, Jesus was at the table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, you do it in remembrance of me. Amen. 
Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your Spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with Peter and all your saints in the, from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, so we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God Whoever you are and wherever you are on your journey of faith, there is a place for you at this Christ's table. The body of Christ. the body of Christ unto eternal life. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Amen. The body of Christ unto eternal life. Amen. The body of the Lord Jesus bless you and keep you safe. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Amen. The body of, etern of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you unto eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you unto eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you unto eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, oh yes, unto eternal life. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you unto eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you unto eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you unto eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you unto eternal life. 
the body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you unto eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you unto eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you unto eternal life. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you unto eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you unto eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you unto eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you unto eternal life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you unto eternal life. Amen. to cleanse the chalice. Oh, you should take it. Fine. Let us pray. Eternal God, Holy One, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is true. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all. Love and serve our God. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Christ and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Our worship is ended, our service is begun. Go in peace to love and serve Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you. There we are. Thanks so much. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> I'll turn this off. Okay.